Hey yo, duckies, Andy Lip here, back with another OBS tutorial, and this is another plugin from Exceldro. It's been out for quite some time. This is the Source Switcher plugin, and I'm gonna be showing you how to create a, a kind of rotator that you could be using for maybe a social media on stream, or maybe even recent events that are on stream as well. It's gonna look something like this. This is just a brief example of what you can do with it. It will make your streams look a little bit sleeker. You can even use today's sponsor, own.tv use their overlays and kind of merge things together so it, this is going to work directly into whatever overlay you're using depending on your setup all right so without further ado let's just get on with it all right put your rock for the stone let's go This portion of the video is sponsored by Own.TV. Own.TV is the only place you guys need to go for all your streaming related needs. Own is the largest streamer shop worldwide and they have absolutely everything. Complete overlay packages, stinger transitions, emotes, badges and many, many more. You can even save yourself a cheeky 50% off anything using my code Andy50 and each purchase will go to supporting me on this channel. I'll leave all the links in the description. Thank you very much, duckies. Right, so to get this working, we are only going to need one plugin, and that plugin is from the one and only Exceldro. Look at this. This is the Source Switcher plugin. I can't believe I've not done a video on this yet. I've been using it for ages. Obviously, it's been out since April 30th. That's crazy. Uh, I, I've done you a, a, a disjustice. I apologize. Uh, but we're going to get it all downloaded. We're going to press the download button just here. I always recommend using the Windows installer because then it's just simple to, to get installed. But if you've got more of a complicated setup, you can use the normal zip files to, to install it. So we're going to download the Windows zip and open that up just down here. And that's actually going to open up a folder that has got two folders in. Data and OBS plugins. We're just going to copy both of those um, right now. And then usually the, the location of OBS is in the C drive. Program files are program files 86, mine's in program files, and then you're looking for OBS-studio, all lowercase just there, okay? Um, so we're just going to paste them directly in there, and mine's going to ask me if I want to replace it, but I don't, because obviously I've got it installed ready to go. And once that's done, we can then open up OBS. Obviously, when you are installing this, make sure OBS isn't open at the time, otherwise it's not going to work correctly. So I've got a blank OBS here with just my camera and I've also got some social media templates that I've created which is just basically a bit of text and a logo that's all I've done on both all, all of these so you've got my uh, YouTube one you've got Instagram one and you've got Twitter obviously you can use different ones such as from our channel sponsor owned.tv download any of their sort of overlays and you can do the same method to create rotators using their stuff as well obviously this is gonna be so easy to just get into whatever setup you've got right now so i've kind of grouped these together so these are individual uh things so i can basically move that whole group around if i wanted to but i've just used Control d to centralize each one of these just so it just makes it a little bit easier for me to edit you can see overlaying them on top of each other they all are like the same size and everything like that so then we're going to go to my live scene and then we can make sure we've actually installed the plugin correctly by if we add a source we should see one for the source switcher just here so we're going to select this and we can call it whatever. I'm going to call it social media rotator. Like so. And we've got the sources. So this is where we have to manually put what sources we want to put in just here. The only annoying thing is when we press the plus sign, we have to manually type them in. So you need to remember what sources you want to add. So if you just press cancel on this one, you can actually change scene whilst keeping this menu open. So now I can see I'm adding each one of these groups individually. So I want Twitter group, Instagram group and YouTube group. So I'm going to press the plus sign. I'm going to type in Twitter group. All right, so when you can see that it's popped up there, that, that means it's working. We're going to press the, the plus again and we're going to type in Instagram uh, group you need to make sure you type it exactly the way that it said in the sources list just there Otherwise, it will not work um, So you can see I've got two here now and let's do the last one which is YouTube group like so press ok and we've got different options in here whether or not we want to, to loop it or anything like that uh, which we definitely do for this because we're creating a rotator so it automatically goes round. We can actually do a time switch just here. So this is how long it's going to take between changing every time. So as you can see now it's going to take 5 seconds 
5,000 milliseconds to change. I want to put it on something a little bit quicker. Let's say, uh, we'll say two seconds. That might be a little bit too quick, but it'll just look a little bit better for uh, this example. As so you can see now in this preview that it's starting to rotate, I can even change back to my live scene now and you can see it just up here. Like so. So you can see it's anchored to the left at the moment. It's up to you how you want to control this source. You can do control E on it to bring up the edit transform. You can change the position of alignment and everything like that. So that's completely up to you. Please edit that wherever and however you want. So we've got some more options just in here that we can play around with. Uh, we can even change it if it's to previous, first, and everything like that. So it's completely up to you. You can even make it so it's random as well, which is a really nice feature. So we can even do transitions. So if I select transition, we can do fade. And if you watch now, it will fade into each one. Like so. So we've just created a really, really simple like rotate uh, that's actually got a little bit of an animation. We can even do uh, turn off like resize, which sometimes I, I prefer. Uh, and then that way you see it actually snapping just here. This is where we need to change where the anchor point and everything like that is as it's trying to snap. You can even use bounding boxes as well, which if you've not used a bounding box before, use uh, select the source of what you want and then you can press Control E and that'll bring up the transform window or you can right click, go to transform, edit transform. And you can mess around with the bounding box, whether or not you want it to be scaled to, say, the uh, outer bounds or the width or something like that. So I'm going to say inner bounds and I'm going to give it some, I'm going to say, uh, we'll say two, uh, no, actually, we'll say a thousand. There we go. And then now you'll see it won't anchor to the side. But you can see it kind of jump in like that. Obviously, just play around the little settings to get what's right for your size and obviously the anchor point as well. So I'm gonna leave it at the, I'm gonna leave it as off for now because I don't actually want to use it. Uh, and we can actually tell it to resize like you saw earlier. We can obviously change the alignment in here as well. So if I say the left side, it'll align everything to the left. So as it's changing through now, it's now obviously keeping whatever sizes it was on and staying anchored to the left. You can see it probably a little bit better if I hide the um, the red box. It doesn't look as janky as it is. There we go. And then you've obviously got all the things inside of here, like if there's media sources, you can get it to, to start playing and everything like that. And also if there's a different source file you wanna load from as well. But that is basically how to do any kind of rotator just using a single plugin, which is so useful. And you can obviously change to different animations, like you can have it swipe in and out, like so. Depending on what you are looking for in your stream, the options are there. So that's pretty much all there is to it with that plugin. It is literally so, so handy, because obviously there's a lot of things, a lot of information you want to share with your viewers, isn't there? And you don't really want to like have everything on screen at once. Like people are going for the more minimalistic approach. And this is definitely the way forward for that. I have actually got a little bit of cool news for you, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, Excel driver actually told me that he's working on a update for this. So we're going to get even more features, which right now, if you're used to doing the show and hide transitions inside of OBS, he's adding this into the source switcher as well, which is amazing. We will be obviously covering it on this channel. So make sure you are subscribed for that. We'll be going into more detail on what the new update is going to be and everything like that. Obviously, it's going to be amazing. Uh, and that's pretty much everything. If you guys want to support me, then consider joining Patreon or the channel memberships just here. And if you've got any questions, bang them in the comments down below because I do reply to every single comment, all right? Put your rock over the stone and I'll see you in the next one. Much love. I just want to say a huge thanks to all my patrons that help make this content full time, make it free for you guys. And also a huge thanks to all my YouTube members. You, you guys are legends. Thank you so much for everything that you do for me and the community. Keep it up, guys. Thank you.